Hey guys, Spider Games here. I'm going to show you the best weapon in Fallout 76, which in my opinion is the anti-armor explosive Gatlin Plasma. Maybe you like the bloody version. But look how I'm doing this line of ghouls like I'm doing a line of cocaine. It's insane. Well, don't do drugs. Uh, you'll wind up like me if you do them. Anyways, this is a legacy weapon. You cannot get it anymore. And let me tell you what. This weapon is super off the hook powerful. Look how I'm killing this Myrler Queen. It kills everything instantly. No gun compares to this. What could compete? Who would dare? <laughs> Bloody faster fire rate gauze minigun. Feast your eyes. You're not this, in the video, are you? this weapon is extremely accurate, however the splash damage isn't that great. It is explosive since all gauze weapons are now explosive, as you know. So this is pretty much a bloodied, explosive, faster fire rate gauze minigun. However, it is not as good a crowd control weapon as the anti-armor Gatlin Plasma, just because the splash damage, like I said, isn't that good. And you can see that in a lot of these clips, but the accuracy makes up more for what it lacks in crowd control. This gun would also do really well with the scope. Anyways, let's get down to comparing. First up, we got the AE Gatlin Plasma, which has the rifle barrel and the beam splitter, which turns it into a shotgun, which makes this weapon just insane. We're comparing it to the BFFR gauze minigun. And this, uh, the gauze weapons had an update to where they're all explosive. They all do splash damage. So we're going to want to use all of our demolition expert perks and all that good stuff. So I'm using adrenaline. I'm going to go ahead and shoot these guys on the ground. After getting our shit charged up with adrenaline, we kill the queen quick, but I wish the health didn't do that. But our damage was 242 with the Gatlin Plasma. Now on to the BFFR gauze minigun. And that's the last time I'm, I'm just going to call it gauze minigun from now on. Now I'm going to charge up my adrenaline by shooting some enemies real quick. And that's it for the queen. Let's see what damage we're doing. 436? Not bad. Alright, let's see how we did. Plasma versus gauze. I think plasma's gonna take it, but not by much. And it sure did. Let's see this in regular speed. And yeah, gauze was not far behind. Alright, now let's compare these weapons against Scorch Beast, starting with the plasma. Gatlin Plasma is struggling just a little bit. They got it done though pretty quick. 183 was the damage we were doing there. Wow! Yeah, the guy's minigun did pretty good there. 436 was the damage we were doing. Let's compare them side by side. And this is going to be pathetic for the Gatlin Plasma. Gauze minigun finished long before the Gatlin Plasma even got the Squish Beast down at halfway. And notice I'm doing this against the legendaries just so, you know, I get the buffs and we get a good comparison. Yeah, and fast motion, it's a joke. Wow. This gun's a beast. Now it is time to fight the Scorch Beast Queen using these weapons. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as I milk the shit out of this. <laughs> Alright, we gotta fight the Winnego Colossus still. We don't have time to fight the Queen for half an hour. So I'm just gonna show you highlights from the fight. Um, one thing you need to know about the gauze minigun, I put a prime receiver on it, so it sort of outperforms the uh, AAE Gatlin Plasma a bit. Um, one reason for that is because it's so accurate and I can get headshots on the Queen very easily, uh, and 
also I have the prime receiver on it, but I wanted to show you this weapon compared to just the regular AAE Gatlin Plasma because that weapon by itself is OP and I'm so impressed with how much this weapon outperforms the Gatlin Plasma. Um, you've seen nothing yet, we've still got to go against the Colossus, but as you can see here, um, I'm just going to show highlights, I'm not going to compare like I was before, but yeah, enjoy the rest of this fight. Finally, the fight you've all been waiting for. Now let's get it on! We're gonna be using this Wendigo, Wendigo? Wendigo Colossus to test our anti-armor explosive Gatlin Plasma against the Bloody Fire Raid Gauze Minigun. As you can see, I'm having a hard time actually hitting the Wendigo Colossus with this Gatlin Plasma. That's why I kind of prefer the Gauze Minigun because it, it's surgery with that thing. I wish I had a scope. I really wish they would add a scope in the future. Bethesda, can you hear me? Anyways, it's right in my face, so I'm having a pretty easy time hitting them. Wait a second. Time for the gauze minigun. I love this weapon. As you can see, hitting him is no problem because he's in my face, but I can also hit him from a long range. Keeping my rounds on him is pretty simple as well when he's moving left to right. He's holding still for me here, which is a blessing. As you can see, I'm just grinding his health down. Now, I have all my buffs active right now, so my weapon is doing 576 damage right now, which is insane. Now, let's do one final comparison, see which weapon is better. Plasma's on top, Gauze is on the bottom. So, Gauze is already behind, it's got some catching up to do. Plasma is going a little too slow. Goz is going to catch up. And Plasma jumped because of my editing. I tried to stitch that together as best I could. But Goz is caught up. And it is about to pass. It's passing. And it passed it. Right there at the end. Here it is in normal speed. Well guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. I know I learned a lot making it and I enjoyed making it too. Leave a like if you learned something. And I've got plans, but first I want to go over the fact that I didn't put a prime receiver on the Gatlin Plasma. And that's because I wanted the uh, Gauze minigun to have a chance and um, it's already OP as is the, ga uh, the Gatlin Plasma. 
It's just so OP. I'm surprised that the Gauze minigun was able to keep up with it uh, even without the uh, Prime uh, receiver. But uh, another thing, when it comes to Scorch Beast, um, I know for the Scorch Beast Queen, she's resistant to explosions. Uh, that includes the explosive legendary effect. And that's one reason why the Gatma Plasma, even if I put a prime receiver on it, wouldn't perform as well as the Gauze minigun. But I've got plans for future videos. I'm going to be interviewing or, yeah, it's going to be an interview of some kind with somebody I believe to be a hacker. He has hacker weapons anyways. He claims to not be a hacker himself. Uh, we're going to look at his weapons. I'm not going to handle them myself because, uh, you know, that's dangerous. Um, I'm also going to be opening 100 legendary modules. And I'm also going to be going over the hordes more in depth. And, uh, yeah, I've got other plans too. But thanks guys for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. And to all my Dying Light viewers, I am going to be uploading Dying Light soon, and hopefully I'll be playing with Klaus Kiwi, John the Chief, the whole crew. So, thanks for watching, and thanks for your support. It means a lot to me.